Hello everyone, in this video, I would like to show how can we implement the Modbus TCP server function, the slave function, using the Siemens i7-1200 PLC, and the Siemens i7-1200 and i7-1500 controller, they are the same to implement the Modbus TCP server function. In this test, I will use one hardware controller, i7-1211 controller, so let's hit this uh, add new device. And in this test, I will use this controller, i7-1211 controller, and its work memory only has a 50 KB. So using this controller, this is the lowest end controller within this i7-1200 series controller. So using this controller, we can see with this 50K, if we implement this server, Modbus TCP server function, how large this Modbus TCP server function block will take inside this uh, i7-1211, okay? So let's click OK, set up this controller hardware configuration. Okay, so firstly, let's set up the IP address. So add a new subnet. And in this test, my CPU IP address 192.168.1.201. This is my CPU IP address. And this will be used as a Modbus TCP server IP address. Okay, and then keep in mind, if we click this uh, Ethernet port and we shift to the system constants here, this HW interface 64, this number, we will use this 64 number for programming the Modbus TCP server. Okay, and let's create a new function. So add a new, click this FC, and we can change this number to 20. Okay, within this FC, from the right side, this instruction side, we can find out the communication instruction and expand here others, Modbus TCP. And now we can drag this Modbus server. And from the right side, we can see this is a version. And in this test, I'm using TI portal version 16. So this version, this function block version, that is the latest one. Okay, I will drag this Modbus server to here. Okay, this is the instant DB name. So firstly, I will rename this Modbus Server DB. Probably we can type in this uh, Modbus TCP Server DB. Okay, uh, this is the IDB here. Uh, and the number, we can manually change this number. For example, this is a uh, 121. This is a single instant DB. Okay, we can click OK. For the new starter, so probably this right question mark here will cause the trouble for you. So please follow me. Firstly, let's set up this connect. Then we will create a new DB here. Add new block. Click this date block. And we will name this is the DB underscore Modbus TCP connect. Okay. And this number, we can select the 20, okay? Click OK. Here, we can name it Modbus TCP Server, okay? And here, date type is very important. So we need to manually type in tcon underscore ip underscore v4. Okay, after this, we can see it automatically create those variables here. So we need to set those parameter here. So firstly, this interface ID, this is the 64, the number we need to type in. So we can type in 64. And the ID number, that is the connection ID. So we can use the 01, okay? And connection type, because we are using the Modbus TCP, so it's still using the TCP IP. So we will use this 11. The 11 for the hex number, that's the 0B. So we will leave as a default. So, and this active established. So because this time we will test the Modbus server. So we do not need to set this active. So we will leave false here. And this remote address here, because it's running as a server, so we will leave zero at here, okay? And the same thing, this remote port, we can leave zero here. But this local port, 
we need to set, for example, 502. This 502 is a common used port for the Modbus TCP communication. So for the Modbus server, we will set the interface ID, this communication connection ID, and this connection type 0B, and this local port. Okay? So after we set this, we can flow this, and then we can drag this Modbus TCP server, this parameter, to this connection here. Okay, and then we can set up other parameters. Here we can declare those variables. Disconnect. Setting up those variables can easy for us to monitor the actual status or control this function block. Status. Keep in mind this status, that is a word. Okay, and after this we can drag this. So we can use those variables to monitor the status. Disconnect. And to check out the detail explanation, the detail meaning, so we can click the F1. This is Modbus server, so we can scroll down. So this DR, that means the data read. And this NDR, that means the new data ready. Okay, basically when it's equal to one, that means it's working there, okay? And if you have a fault and it will show the status, so we can click this status and we can look at this code and diagnose your communication. Okay, the last, this mode bus hold register this area. This is our local PLC data buffer. So we can set up new data DB. DB. So here we can name it Modbus TCP data and select this number. So we can set a new number, for example, 12. And at here we can name it Modbus server. And this date type here, we can set up one array. So select this. And this address, we can start from one. And the length, we can set up 120. Okay. And this unit, we can set as a word. The reason why I set a word here, that's because the common used function code, when we test the Modbus TCP communication, that is the function code 03, and uh, 16. When we test the Modbus function 03 and 16, so we will browse the Modbus address, this 40,000, this area. And that time the register, every register, that means the one word. The total length, that is the 1 to 125. So here I declared 120. Actually, we can declare a little bit longer, a larger, okay? But keep in mind, when we use the 03 and the 16, this Modbus function, so that unit is a word. One register means one word, okay? And one more thing, personally, I would recommend for this state buffer here, click this uh, properties and select this uh, attributes. We can uncheck this optimized block uh, size. So after we uncheck this and after the compile, the system will automatically assign this offsite address. So this buffer we will have an absolute address. So if you're familiar with the Siemens traditional controller, for example, i7-300 or 400 controller, they all have this absolute address. So with this absolute address, it's easier to write the individual bool or the byte within this word. Okay, after we declare here, so we can flow this, and then we can drag this variable, drag to this hold register this area here, release. And now we can download this controller. So keep in mind, the current controller, the IP address is 192.168.1.201. So from this OB1, we need to call this FC20. We need to drag this FC20 allows this OB1 to call this FC20. Okay, now we can download it. 
So now if I double click this FC20, it will jump to this function block here. Let's click this online. Okay, now everything shows okay. So we haven't set up the client side yet. So this server is waiting for the connection. Okay, in the meantime, from this watch list, so expand here, let's add one watch list. So from this watch list, we can open this Modbus TCP data, this buffer data. And let's expand here. And let's drag this buffer, let's drag 20 buffer here, drag to this watch list so that we can monitor this PLC buffer here. Let's click this monitoring. Okay, now we are preparing here. Let's shift to the Modbus TCP client side. To allow my laptop to run the Modbus TCP client, so we can go to the WinTech, this website, we can download this software, ModoScan64, this software. This software can run as a Modbus TCP client. This is a common used tool to test the Modbus TCP client, okay? Okay, once we download, we can double click this model scan. And this is a trial mode. Click OK. Click OK. Okay, to set up this client, so we can click this connect. So we need to set this Modbus TCP server. That means this target, that is a Modbus TCP server. This is our PLC side. And this is our PLC address. That is a Modbus TCP server IP address. So here we need to set 192.168.1.201. This is our PLC IP address. And the port, that is a 502. Okay. And let's click the OK. If this is a zero, call your address. So this Modbus address is showing like this. But the common used Modbus address, that is this, 03, holding register. So once we select this, this Modbus address will shift to 40,000, this address. So let's shift to the hex mode and let's test that. Okay, this is our client side. So firstly, let's double click and let's set the data here. So hex, let's set A, B, C, D. So as we can see, the A, B, C, D can send to this server side. Okay, next one, let's set 1234. Okay, 1234 can send to this server. And at this 10, we can write the data from the server side. For example, let's write EEFF and write 4567 here. And then let's transfer to this buffer. And then we can see EEFF and this data. So this address, this number, and this Modbus address, they match here. So that means this communication was set up correctly. And now if we go back to this uh, function block side, so because now we are communicating correctly, so it shows 7006, that means everything correct. And this is the Modbus server, and let's scroll down and click this status. And this 7006, that means data is uh, being received. Okay, that means that is correct. Okay, this is a Modbus TCP test. So this PLC is running as a Modbus TCP server and this Modbus scan run as a Modbus TCP client. And now let's go to here, the program info. And now we program this Modbus server, this function block, and we implement this function correctly. And now let's go to the program info and let's look at how large work memory we used. So as we can see, now we used 9.9 K bytes. So basically that is a 10 K bytes for implement the Modbus TCP server. So this value we can use as a reference. Okay, this is a i7-1200 or i7-1500 PLC running as a Modbus TCP server. That is for today. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumb up. If you like to watch more videos in my channel, please subscribe and hit the bell. Thank you for watching.